Hello, good people. Welcome to Modern Wife. My name is Sipoka Zizomi. So today I am very excited. Firstly, because this is my first YouTube video. Yes, I finally did it. And secondly, because it is December. Guys, good December. No, hola, papa, and le. Everyone is excited. The festive season excites people. Some of are ready, some are not so ready. You know what? Nonetheless, December is here and we just have to get moving with it. This season for some people can be quite daunting, especially if you are Umakoti, because that means Funega Wens and Doni, Ukoti is a CC. So um, if you are from the rural areas like myself or married to someone from the rural areas or Nolali, like ourselves, uh, at this time of the year, you have to go home and you have to visit family, you have to visit your in-laws. And you know what that means. It means Funega Ukoti is a And for some people, it might not be so good. So today I'm here to give you tips on how to survive the Makoti season. Okay, so I know for most of the South African tribes, if you are Omakoti or if you've been welcomed as a wife, there's a certain way that you need to dress or there's a certain attire that you need to have. And I know some of you are probably thinking, really, in the 21st century, are women still subjected to this? Yes, some places they are, but this video is not about that. But I'm hoping that we can start this conversation so that ultimately we can impact the future. So my tip for that is, you need to find yourself a very good designer that's gonna tailor make your outfits to what you really like, but still um, respectful or still within the standard of how a Makoti needs to dress uh, for that tribe or for that culture. Um, because it is summer, it is hot, and no offense or disrespect, most of these Makoti attires, guys, Ziyashi is a, we are here to me, guys, phew, Ziyashi is me. Like, so it's already hot now. So, try and find someone who's gonna make something that you really like, but it's still in line with um, your culture, or it's still in line with what a Makoti, with how a Makoti needs to dress in your culture or in your tribe. Um, I'll try and find pictures of the stuff that I've made or, or what it is that I'm supposed to wear. Um, M's in um, and yeah, I'll try and link it to this video if I do find it. Um, so again, at this time of the year, when you do travel home, uh, especially as Lalini, there are a lot of traditional ceremonies, rituals, and all of that. Like people were even saying that we need a timetable for Imiki to get December, and no joke, because almost every second house there is something going on. And if um, you are expected to show up there, you are expected to help, you are expected to work. Sometimes Lemikiti or Imikrimbi, it's in your household or it's in your house. So um, that means that you now are the person that sort of has to work the most. So in situations like that, my tip would be you need to outsource. So you need to call on your friends, you need to call on your sisters and ask them to come and help you out. Especially if you do stay in the city and you probably travel home for the festive season chances are throughout the year so some of them may be a bit reluctant to come and help you out but your friends or your sisters will never do that to you so call on those people and when they do call on you just make sure that you can do the same for them i spoke of outsourcing and now my next tip is insourcing Look, I know fam each family has its own dynamics, but this tip is really in situations where you have sisters-in-law 
or sister-in-law or cousins-in-law that are not exactly so handy we don't want to say they are lazy so let's just say that they are not so handy and um, my tip for that is you need to insource so you need to get the people that are already inside the household to help you out so you need to bribe their kids if they are if they have kids good for you you need to bribe their kids and guys hear me out here not exactly in a wrong way but when you are going home just bring something nice for the kids. Bring goodies for them so that you can win them over and they can ultimately be your friends. Kids are very easy to win them over. Just bring them something nice that they like. Pay attention to them. And before you know it, they are your friends. They want to spend time with you. They really like you. And if you are in the kitchen cooking, one will volunteer to help you with the dishes. One will be busy chopping onions for you. So I think really you need to bribe the kids. I'm letting you in on my little secret there. So... Okay, so my next tip is you need to have your own stuff, especially if you are elite Makoti. So what do I mean by elite Makoti? It's when you are probably the only Makoti in the household or Ungena Makoti Omdala in the household. You know that person when everyone comes and they ask, where is this? Where can I find the knife? Or if there is a ceremony, everyone wants to know Ipi flower, all of Then if you are that person, my friend, you are elite Magoti, and you need to have your own stuff, especially if you stay in the city. Um, it's a bit weird that when you do go home, now you're going to be knocking on people's houses or asking for a stove or whatever. So you need to have your own stuff, have your own stove. Actually, guys, this stove right here, that is a must for a Magoti. You need to have that. Have your own pots, have your own... Um, dishes try and have your own cutlery all of those things just throw them and have your own and another good um idea in this and this is what i'm, I'm doing with my friends um in the next year as well is to have a stock failure where you all contribute money and you know that this month we're buying um maybe parts and stuff like that for this person and then in the following month you're buying pots and stuff like that for the other person so that ultimately you can all have your own stuff and you don't have to worry about tip number five is don't come empty handed so this for me is really a good principle as a human being if you go into someone's house just don't rock up there empty handed i would assume you do the same when you go to your own parents house is that you just don't rock up there empty handed same goes with your in-laws don't go there empty handed just bring groceries especially mothers-in-law i think they really love groceries some anyways uh, but just bring groceries or bring something um, and this really helps you as well for example if you're someone who loves cooking like myself you don't have to be asking where are the spices and when you do find the spices so just bring your own spices bring your own peppers and then bring um big things or groceries and Okay, so I was having this conversation with my husband and he was mentioning that, okay, I hear what you're saying, but some of the tips might be very easy if you have a, re a good relationship with your in-laws. What about someone who doesn't really have a good relationship with your in-laws? And uh, we can't be oblivious to that fact because it does happen. Um, but my advice or my tip there would be give what you want to receive. So if you want to receive laughter, be the first one to share a joke. If you want to receive love, be the first one to love people. And if you want to receive kindness, be kind first. Be the first one who is intentional about building that relationship. And I promise you, eventually people are going to come around. It might take a bit longer, but you just need to be persistent and you need to be dedicated to it. And eventually people are people. And I think this is not necessarily even a tip of being umakoti, it is really biblical. You are sowing, so you need to sow what you want to rip. And if you are sowing kindness, eventually people are going to come around and you are going to have a good relationship um, with your in-laws. And if you are in that situation, I really pray uh, for healing and for peace so that you can go on or get on to what God has called you to do because I believe that marriage is a ministry. Okay, so for any relationship to work, I think there needs to be a sacrifice or a compromise. Now, a relationship with your in-laws is no different. There needs to be a sacrifice and there needs to be a compromise. So I know some of the tips that I've mentioned, um, they are a compromise, but I feel like it's compromises that you as a human being can do. 
but my tip then my last and final tip would be don't compromise who you are don't do anything that is a compromise to who you are um don't start anything that you know that you will not be able to maintain in the long run because now that will be compromising the person that you are so just don't do it have a conversation with your husband maybe let him address it or just put your foot down on certain things that you know that you will not be able to maintain in the long run so as much as you can compromise just don't compromise who you are okay so yeah guys that's it from me i really hope you liked the video uh and you enjoyed it and if you did please share it with your friends also subscribe to my channel leave a comment let me know what you thought what it is that you would like to see from me in the future and yeah um let's keep the conversations going in the comment section and i love you so so much until we see each other again bye